Hi folks and welcome to another video looking at static pressure performance and this time we'll see how relevant it is to an AIO radiator which if you watched my previous video you'll know is the Corsair H80 i version 2. For the fan lineup in this round of tests I've chosen all but one of the top 10 performers from the previous tests and I'm also throwing in the A12X25 because you know me I clearly love making this fan look bad and there's simply no better way to do that than to install it, power it on, and measure its performance. <laughs> Before I do any thermal tests, I want to show how the radiator compares to the heat sinks in terms of flow resistance. And for that, I'm going to compare this extra thick HATI radiator to my Copper True, which is about as restrictive as you'll get with an air cooler. I made an aperture for the rear of the chamber which allows me to test the level of static pressure for each cooling method, and with the aperture alone the pressure is about 2.5 pascals. With the heatsink in place there's a rise of 4 pascals, and with the radiator in place there's a rise of 6 pascals. So whilst the difference may not seem much, it's actually 50% greater with the radiator, which is a significant margin. But that's not all. Airflow through the radiator is further obstructed by the mesh at the back of the case, so the actual resistance will be even higher. For the thermal tests, I've set the pump to its highest speed using the performance profile, and as before, I'm monitoring the intake temperature a short distance from the installed fan. So let's see how we get on. Once again, the Fantex T30 and Thermalrite C12 are comfortably ahead of the rest. However, this time it's the Delta WFC in third place, eclipsing the Cougar Vortex by a mere tenth of a degree. It's also interesting to see the Noctua P12 outperform its sibling, the F12, in this scenario, and it's the first time we've seen both of them surpass the Gentle Typhoon. The Lian Li P28 and EK loop fan have really struggled here, especially considering the latter is supposedly engineered for radiator performance, and the A12X25, well, it is what it is. As before, I ran the test a second time after ramping the fan up to full speed, and whilst the performance is there, along with a fair bit of extra noise, it still can't catch up to the C12 and only narrowly passes the Delta and the Cougar by a few tenths of a degree. If we look at the relationship between radiator performance and static pressure performance, again we see two of the weaker fans leading the charge, and the strongest static pressure performers are very much in the middle. I wonder, how does the G1238B fare in this test? Well, I ran it through and it beats the T30 by just under 1 degree, which is virtually exactly the same as it managed on the heatsink. So, what can we say about these results? Well, it's pretty clear that this size of radiator, despite its extra depth, is not able to keep up with the previously tested heatsink, even with an extremely powerful fan like the Nidic. Granted, it would be advisable to run two fans in push-pull on a radiator like this, but it's clear that a larger radiator with two or three fans in parallel would be significantly better. Most importantly, the static pressure performance of the fans does not matter, despite conventional wisdom. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.